fast, fresh, flavorful. She is also our flow buddy from Bangalore chapter. A little about Natasha now. She started her career as a gelato chef trained in Italy and came back to start the brand Mama Mia Gelato. She then expanded the chain Pan India and sold the company in 2013. Natasha has trained in culinary schools in Italy and Singapore. Through her online culinary platform, Cucina Mia by Natasha, she now shares a passion for cooking modern cuisine in a practical and simplified manner. With several workshops around India, she has been successful in teaching people the art of cooking global flavors using fresh local produce without toiling in the kitchen all day. Her food mantra is smart cooking, where cooking is not a chore, but something that can be enjoyed even in today's fast life. And we will experience it today for sure. Her way of quickly making the ice creams is, is a pure sheer joy. Now over to Aarti for a formal introduction. Thank you, Varsha. A very good evening, everyone, and a very warm welcome to Flo Kanpur's event, Gelato Amor, a gelato making workshop with the famous author and culinary expert, Natasha Chelmi. Whether you're a clueless child or a worldly wise adult, it is to a yummy scoop of ice cream, they both go to quick fix their worries. I'm sure we've all experienced that when we've reached out to that refrigerator to just have that bite into a quick uh, yum ice cream to take our worries away. The whole of last year, we saw a lot of people whipping up storms in their kitchen and rustle up amazing delicacies. And now with the summer setting in, we felt learning how to make quick gelatos could just be what the doctor had ordered. In addition to teaching us some amazing recipes, Natasha will also be giving us some tips on food photography. Because let's admit it, ladies, that Instagram post needs to be picture perfect, to say the least. Without much delay, I would now like to welcome Natasha to take on the stage. I would suggest we try and keep the session as interactive as possible. So please keep sending your message and queries on the chat box. Uh, over to you, Varsha and Natasha. So it's said that you can't buy happiness, but you can surely buy a cup of ice cream. So without much ado, I would want Natasha to take over and start with her class. Thank you. Hi, everyone. It's finally happening after all that planning. Thank you, Flo. Kanpur, Aarti, Varsha, and thank you all the lovely ladies for taking our time to tune in. Um, I just saw the numbers went up and up. I'm like, wow, I'm very <laughs> humbled that you've taken our time from your busy schedule to tune in today. So yes, let's go and get going. We've been working for a while on today's workshop. Um, so I'm Natasha Chelmi. I'm a chef and now a cookbook author of that's what my book looks like, Fast, Fresh, Flavorful. Um, more on that later, it's won the Goldman Book Award and it's on Amazon. So that is my latest thing that I did during the lockdown. Apart from that, I have self-taught myself and I am here to make life easy for you. It is summer, it is time to eat some ice cream. I did learn to make gelato. I started my career, as Marcia said, making gelato in Italy. And I'm here to simplify it for you because commercially gelato or ice cream needs big machines and specialized machines. But hey, it's too cumbersome. It's too time consuming. You do one flavor at a time. Who has time for all that? So I worked out my shortcut method, which is a no churn, egg free um, variety. And once you get the basics, trust me, you will be making your own gelato shop at home. I've stopped buying ice cream from the market. You know, I just find it so easy and quick. And my kids just order like, okay, mom, what flavor can we make today? And I'm like, okay, you get creative. Tell me what you want to make and I'll make it for you. So that's what I'm here to sh share with you. So yes, let's go. And there's lots to take notes um, if you want, because I will be sharing lots of information with you. Okay, right, and the ammo. Let's go. So before she starts, I would like to say that you can put in your, in the chat box, you can put in the flavors that you would want to know about, and we are going to take it up. Okay, so 
Okay, so gelato amore. Amore means love. And Italians are all about amore. Trust me, they can even glamorize that one tomato and one onion and make it sound like the most romantic thing on earth. And that's why Italian poets, artists, you know, they're all Italian. But then the Americans came in and they commercialized everything the Italians created. You have ice cream, but then Hagen does made it into a brand. You have coffee, which is originally Italian, and Starbucks made it into a brand. You have pizza, which the Italians made with all the amore, and then the if Americans would have been into Pizza Hut. This was a very interesting discussion I had um, with somebody where the Italians said, you know, we are the artists, we create, and then the Americans go and make it into a brand. But anyway, so let's more about Amore today. Um, let's get on. We need a basic gelato mix. I'm going to just give you some basic inputs on, I think you all have the recipes. My base is cream um, and condensed milk. So condensed milk or normal milk made, the amul mitai, whatever, I'll just tell you, those of you who make it in machines, I know Varsha said she makes ice cream in a machine. You basically cook the milk, cook it down, reduce it, and you add it to the machine, the pasteurization process. That is already done, and the sugar is mixed in your condensed milk. So two plus two equals four, and one plus one plus one also equals four. So, you know, I'm doing the two plus two, the shortcut, and the cream. So I am beating the cream. I have beaten it just with a normal electric beater to um, put air into it. The job that your churning machine does, I am doing it using an electric beater. Okay, so that is my cream. Now, let me first just clarify before you all ask, which cream are you using? For simplicity, we are using Amul Fresh Cream. Okay, I really believe in simplicity, local products. Don't stress yourself out. I mean, life is enough complication. Why, why stress, make food a stress, right? Now, this is a low fat cream. It also says 25% low fat food. Okay, so that is another thing for you to know. Um, so that's one cream. Now, if you want a creamier, high fat ice cream or gelato, sorry, I've just squeezed everything out of this. I'm using the Amul whipping cream or you get tropolite or any other local dairy will give you a higher fat a 35 percent fat cream which will give you a creamier ice cream or a creamier gelato any cream works as long as it's non-sweetened okay so all i have done here is i have beaten the amul cream let's talk about the easy cream okay now this as I said, it's not going to completely give you peaks. It will give you a very fluffy consistency. You can see it's got bubbles in it. Right. So I have put in air and made it nice and frothy, like a milkshake. Okay, so I made it frothy because you want ice cream that's a little airy. And this is the consistency. And we move ahead. Varsha, how long have you beaten the cream for? 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay. It takes time. That's why I did it earlier. Otherwise, you just be yes, so 10 minutes. Hmm. Varsha, please let me know if I'm not clear at any point and what else I can specify. Okay, so as for your recipe, I have also simplified your recipe to use one pack of this and half a tin of a milk made because I'm very against wastage in the kitchen. You know, we all have that fridge and we have those unopened jars lying at the back of our fridge. So if you buy one, tin of milk made and you buy two packs of this cream you can make two flavors in one shot zero wastage okay so i have worked out my calculations like that so let's get going with that so half a tin of milk made one pack of this cream okay so i have my bowl here now for convenience sake i had whipped two together so i'll just weigh it out so we get one packet equivalent so that's 250 We are starting with the tiramisu, by the way. Yeah. Okay. So, cream gone in. And I need 200 grams of condensed milk. You can do roughly half, but then I just have an open tin, so I'll just weigh it out. But otherwise, it's roughly half. So, even if you don't have a weighing machine at home, it's fine. Okay. So, cup wise, we need one cup of cream. 
and tuck wise your 200 grams of condensed milk will come to three fourth three fourth cup of condensed milk right so i have all forms of measurements to make life easy for you because who has time <laughs> right so first step this is your base okay one of the base then we will work around this so i'm just going to combine it with a spatula okay that's it Right, tell me, Marsha. Okay. So tell me, how did your gelato journey begin? Hmm, how did my gelato journey begin? I see a lot, there are a lot of people, you know, when I saw the WhatsApp group who know me from back in my days in Calcutta. So yeah, I, <laughs> hi everyone, those who know me personally from before. So yeah, so they, that's what happened. Um, 2005. I was a college graduate and I was figuring out like, I think a lot of you have kids my age also maybe, what to do with your life. And I saw an opportunity. So there you go, one thing. There was no premium brand of ice cream in India. There was no haagen I'm talking about 2005, yeah? Yeah. Um, and I thought, okay, that's a good opportunity to start something. And I used to travel to Italy as a student. I was in the UK. And I came across Italian gelato. Now, gelato, if I just also tell you the difference between, you know, they do it very fancily. It's, it's a nice fancy decor, very fresh flavors, low fat, and very glamorous. Not like a, you know, vanilla cup and chocolate cup ice cream, which we grew up on at the top of right. <laughs> So I, and there was Ferrero Rocha and, you know, lemon and strawberry. And so I was like, okay, that's an opportunity. I need to do this back in India. Mm -hmm. Also, I had to learn how to do it. So I got in touch with some companies, went to Italy, literally in a factory, rolled up my sleeves, started mixing milk, sugar and everything. So yeah, that's my other thing to you. When you see an opportunity, grab it. If your gut tells you, well, that's business. It may work, it may not work, but hey, that's life, right? Everything's a gamble. And uh, yeah, practical training. I don't have a degree. I am a business student. Um, but it's all practical, uh, just learning. And I came back to Calcutta, started my first shop. I used to go every morning and, you know, mix things and, you know, lots of stuff, be in the shop, sell the flavors. A lot of people from Calcutta might know me from those days. And that was how my love with Italy and everything Italian began. So your family was into uh, making uh, ice creams, no? So they have. Well, like, yeah. My dad has an industrial ice cream brand, which now my sister is running. So I had the background, but I didn't want to join the family business. Right. So I figured so that's also about marketing, right? You can't sell the same product to a different target market. So right. that was a mass market brand. Hmm. So I had to completely differentiate my brand for a premium. Yeah. You know, so there you go. That's also marketing. If any of you have a family business and you think you can just extend the brand, think about it. Is your customer the same? Is your product the same? Otherwise, completely cut off. So yours was the artisanal ice cream, yes. and industrial ice cream. Exactly. Premium ingredients, higher price, fancy brand makes people actually thought it was an Italian brand, by the way. So yeah. there you go, that's marketing because Hagen Das is American ice cream. It yeah. has a fancy Swiss name, hmm. um, but it's actually American ice cream. So you can be exotic. It's all about perception. Yeah, yeah, true. So basically, okay, I'll just take a break, Marsha, and come back to this. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So I've mixed the cream and the condensed milk. Okay. And I have a nice homogenized mix. Right. Okay, um, I'll zoom in later. There's nothing much in this. I want to talk to you about tiramisu. Okay, so tiramisu literally means pick me up in Italian. And I have these lovely tiramisu cookies here, which are the characteristic of a tiramisu. And I think all you can for ladies have some as well from Flo. So now a tiramisu dessert can be made into a frozen version, into an ice cream or a gelato. That's also a food for thought because any dessert, a lot of you are good bakers. So any of your desserts can be converted into a frozen version. Okay, right. First thing about tiramisu is coffee. We need to get the coffee going. 
Um, I just made some espresso in my little espresso machine. That's because, but you can just put nest, this instant coffee with a little bit of water and make a decoction. If you're in the South or you have put filter coffee, you can use filter coffee, your Nespresso machines, any coffee, okay? So what I've done is I've said combine one tablespoon coffee powder with a bit of warm water and then add it to your mix, okay? So I just need to give the tiramisu ice cream a bit of a coffee and a liqueur flavor. Talking of liqueur, you can use rum, brandy, whiskey, um, whatever you like. Yeah, Marsala wine is what they use in Italy, but I'm using rum today. So anything from that family, right? So I'm just gonna put two tablespoons of a coffee liquor into my mix to get a nice coffee color. I'm just gonna zoom in now as well. So you can see what I'm making. I'll flip the camera. Just give us a minute and we flip the camera. Right, so I want you to see this. That is my light coffee color. A normal tiramisu gets its color from um, egg yolks, but I'm keeping it simple and eggless today. Okay, so that's done. I have my espresso or my Nescafe coffee and water combined here. I need to make a soaking for the Savoyardi cookies. That is also how you do a normal tiramisu, okay? So that goes here, I have this. This will be bitter, so I need a little bit of icing sugar, just a teaspoon or so of icing sugar. That goes in. One teaspoon. So this is the mix. It's got a nice light coffee color, very characteristic of the tiramisu. Uh, do we have some people cooking along, Varsha? Uh, I don't think so. I don't see any. Okay. I think there are some kids cooking along. Uh, they don't have the cameras on, but I know a lot of couple of people are cooking along. Nice. Okay, so basically we're gonna dip this and then we're gonna layer our um, tiramisu gelato. Now I need to head to my freezer because I have a simple cake tin. This definitely looks like a well-used gelato tin as well, which could go into your freezer and you basically scoop out from it. Um, I have chilled it. One thing about making ice cream or making gelato is you need everything chilled. Do not be cooking in your kitchen. Don't be cooking any sabzi because it will absorb the smell and the flavor. Okay, so I have my containers chilled. And That's very important tip that you've given, not to be cooking anything to soak in the flavor on the ice cream. Yes. I have had bad experiences, trust me. When you have a tiramisu and it's smelling of jeera. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, and in Mamma Mia, we once did pest control and all the ice cream absorbed the pest control flavor. So, okay. I mean, smell. So there you go, things to learn. You learn Can when... you put kalua in this? Kalua okay. Okay. Yes, you can do kalua. Let me put the alcohol. I didn't do that. We can do kalua. What else, uh, Vasha? Baileys, you could do Baileys yeah, also. Baileys. And I put uh, Irish whiskey also, the Irish yes. whiskey flavor. Okay, so let me talk to you while I'm just dipping. You can just see what I'm doing, so I don't need to explain. And I will talk to you talking about Irish whiskey and Irish coffee. This is also how you make an, uh, a coffee ice cream. So you can add the thing with these recipes today, and I've done the wrong thing by dipping this in the wrong thing. So maybe. Um, the thing with today's recipes is I would say just go with the flow as per your uh, taste once you have the base right. So if you want to do an espresso flavor, espresso and chocolate chip, you just add a lot more coffee inside, okay? If you want to do a cappuccino flavor, you add as much coffee as you would like in a cappuccino flavor. Just taste and go along. Irish coffee, you would add whiskey into your base. I, a coffee and nuts go very well. So praline, if you're like into caramelized almonds, um, have a look, sorry to interrupt. I'll just, I'm gonna dip each one into the liquor. So I have coffee, I have a little water, I have rum and sugar. It's soaked, just break it into pieces. Just zoom in here. And into your mix. Okay, so dip and it goes in. 
Okay, so you can do cookies, you could do Oreo cookies. Um, you can do a dark coffee with a strong coffee flavor, whatever you like. What are your thoughts, Varsha? So, uh, no, I'm just, don't just set it uh, straight, like how you do it for a tiramisu, the ice cream, the cookies. I'm putting some inside. No, you can't set it like a tiramisu, okay. like in a dessert. No, no, no. Then that will be a tiramisu. Okay. You can do it that way. Okay, you're right. So there are two ways of doing it. I want it to be scoopable. I'm not slicing it like a frozen dessert. I'm giving you tiramisu in a scoop. Okay. So if I have a layer of cake at the bottom, I won't be able to scoop it. Um, right. That's the difference. So yes, you're right. You can do it like a layer dessert. So you would do a layer of tiramisu, you do the cream, and right. then you do the layer, and then you do the... If you're doing a layered dessert, I recommend you using a high fat cream, which is the whipping cream. Okay. Right. So how you do a frittata or something, you know, like how you layer it and cut it. And yeah, you, you need to do, use a freeze proof platter. So you need to use a borosil. Um, uh, yeah, make sure it's freeze proof. Huh? Okay. Borosil is freeze proof, not the, not the thin glass one. I have had people send me messages of their dishes breaking in the freezer. True. Okay, so this is done. This is going into the freezer. And I'm just gonna show you what I've pre-made. Um, and then we're gonna finish it off as well. So this is going into the freezer. And I will just be back. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, there was a question about uh, what biscuits these are. Like, I know you've mentioned it before, but a couple of people still have it. Called, I'll just show you. They are called Lady Finger Biscuits. You get them on Amazon is your best bet. Um, otherwise, any gourmet food store will get there. Uh, you get it. Um, but otherwise, Amazon is your best bet. Okay. And I have some pre-made tiramisu. It's just out of the freezer. I'm going to give it five minutes outside. But in the meantime, I want to finish this one off, okay? So we have the tiramisu gelato here. You can see the cake has been, is where it is. I did scrape some off to show you the texture. I will scoop it out. It's extremely hard. Take the ice cream out five minutes and then, um, so this needs a finishing of cocoa powder. You can't have a tiramisu without cocoa powder. So I'm just gonna get a cocoa powder. I normally use an unsweetened cocoa powder. Then, so Natasha, somebody has posted a question that for diabetics, how do you do this? Um, for diabetics, it's going to be another recipe because the today's recipe, the condensed milk already contains the lot of sugar. Yeah. So then you have to make it. I will have to give you another recipe where you're using a sugar substitute, like sugar-free or sorbitol or something. But then you will need a machine or it's another process. I'm sorry. You'll have to cook the milk with the sugar-free um, element. Okay. Okay. Wow. Did you see that? Yeah. And so Dusting of cocoa powder. I have some chocolate shavings on top and that is your tiramisu gelato, okay? I'm just gonna leave it out and scoop it in exactly two minutes to show you the texture. Is there a particular temperature the uh, freezer needs to be set at? Yeah, so now the thing is our domestic freezers get very cold. Um, in an ice cream shop or a gelato shop, your temperature would be minus 12 to 14. That's how it stays so soft, yet not melted. Um, at home, most freezers are minus 18 or even more. Hence, ice cream gets absolutely rock hard. But if you want to keep frozen food, you have to keep the temperature low. So minus 14, if you really want to have a gelato party at home and you have a separate freezer, then minus 14 is your storage temperature and serving temperature. Natasha, isn't it a good idea to cover the ice cream from top? So yeah, so you can cling wrap it or you can put a foil or anything. Yeah, cover so it. these uh, bread tins also come with a cover or yeah. you can just use the borosil with the cover ones. 
yeah, you can use, uh, these also have covers, so you can use the bread pan cover or just cover it with a foil and into your freezer. Okay, so this is, I'm going to serve this now. So that is the basic, okay, of how to make a it gelato. Took us, I think, 20, 25 minutes, the whole process to do it, and it's so simple. Even less, I'm talking, so yeah. Yeah. I, when I make it, it's normally, yeah, including whipping cream and that 15 minutes and, you know, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, right. I'll just get ready for the next one. We can take some questions, um, Vaisha. Yeah, sure. I think I'll take the questions later. You can start with the other ice cream. Okay, so the next one, I'm going to use a whipping cream, a higher fat cream, um, to show you the difference. And then, of course, it's based on convenience, it's also based on um, what you, your preference is. Right. It's fine. I think. I think there was a question on the quantity of liquor to put in the tiramisu. Uh, one depends how much flavor you want. One tablespoon is good into the soaking. Yeah. Um, you can put a little bit into the basic uh, cream mix also. Um, and then just taste. You want a stronger flavor. If you're using Kalua or bay leaf, um, they are less alcoholic in content. They are sweeter. So I would say you could even reduce your condensed milk by 20 grams and then add in the babies or the kalua, otherwise, uh, because you need to compensate for the sweetness. And um, otherwise you can add one to two tablespoons, yeah? Okay, so this is my, I just wanna show you the consistency. This is thicker. This is whipping cream, okay? So in, ideally, if you want creamier gelato, get whipping cream. Anyone from your local dairy would also work. That's the difference. Okay, so you will see a thicker consistency here. I'm just going to weigh out 250 grams and we get on with the next one. What is the next one? Should we do a chop? Uh, what, what is the okay. coconut? Yes. Coconut. Yeah. Coconut, right? So in okay. case anybody doesn't have an so coconut is an interesting one because you can do coconut like an Aryan does. Someone doesn't have an electric beater. Then you've got to use a whisk, a normal whisk, right. and you need a lot of muscle power. <laughs> so you're gonna have to compensate with your arm. Right. Um in case of an electric whisk. That's the only thing. You need a lot of muscle power, but you can do it. Okay, great. Okay. So um, we have cream, we have condensed milk going in. So I'll just weigh it out. You see a weighing machine is also a useful tool to have. You just get on Amazon for 300 rupees or something. Um, what I wanna say in general, we can talk about general cooking also, is if you have a well-equipped kitchen with all the convenient tools, I do all my work myself. I chop, I prep, um, I cook my meals myself and I work. Um, my biggest tip is Stock up on the right equipment, good chopping boards, good knives, weighing machines, um, nice bowls, and you will love spending time in the kitchen. It will Very not cool. be a chore. Yeah, you agree, Varsha? So all these fancy knives and all, they really excite you to cut with them. Yeah, you'll enjoy. Look at, I have different knives, just to give you a little insight, because you know, we don't only stop by gelato. This is Carpini from Godrich Carpini. Try chopping onion to the, the knife will do the job. You don't have to put in any effort. Right. You know, and now it's so therapeutic also. Um, so yeah, uh, get nice knife. You'll feel like a chef. Get a nice wooden board and, you know, enjoy it. It can be therapeutic. I love it. So, okay, back to coconut. I'm just using ready coconut milk. You can use fresh coconut milk um, if you are into making your own coconut milk. Otherwise, I just put one tetra pack or 250 ml of coconut milk goes in right in addition to your base okay so obviously your output will be more and then i have some it's just like a nadi lagu you know it tastes yummy um i have some i mix that and then i have some desiccated not desiccated just freshly grated coconut which i've lightly toasted right. just on a dry pan you can also just put fresh without toasting it Hmm. And I'm going to put this in. 
So okay. I see that it's not pink. It's all it's white. You've left it white. I didn't toast it too much. Yeah, I, I feel it dries out. Um, so you can toast it more, but I didn't want to dry it out too much. So it's toasted, but not that brown. Okay. So that's up to you. Um, let me just get my spoon. Now, tender coconut. I'm sure you all want to know what tender coconut is. Yes, I was about to ask. Okay, now tender coconut is basically, now in Calcutta and the Bengali you call it dab malai. Hmm. So you get a tender coconut, you take out the malai, you pray to God that there is malai. malai. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the most depressing part when you open the thing and you have malai in a year, you know. So that's why I don't want to do it today and don't want to stress you all out. Yeah, make sure you pray and then open it. You put a little water into your mix not too much so i want to tell you if you have to balance out liquid and solid in ice cream if you have too much liquid it's going to become very frozen and icy right. okay so i would say um one fourth cup of dark pani um i think you still need the coconut milk because the dark pani will not give you a strong flavor as coconut milk does okay hmm. So I would suggest in this mix, add a little dark pani and then instead of adding this coconut, you just take out the fleshy bits of a nariyal of a tender coconut and just chop it up and you mix it in. And that will give you the whole flavor. Okay. okay. So that's what you do. Let me, so then this is ready. This is a nice white color. In goes the coconut. So you have a lot of texture. And now if you've all heard of Bounty, the Bounty chocolate, this is really bounty chocolate. Now in this, you can put chocolate shavings, you can put Oreo cookies, chocolate chips. I'm gonna show you a freezing chocolate also, which you know, you do choco bars, but and that really is a like a bounty chocolate ice cream. Otherwise these chocolate shavings can also go in. I'll add some when I'm clearing it. And you have, a, you can, so you have plain coconut, you have coconut and chocolate. You can do a mango sauce, a mango puree, Coconut and mango is very, um, you know, very tropical. Mm. Coconut and pineapple. Yeah, coconut and pineapple goes really well. It's... Yeah, like a pina colada. Yeah. So oh, you passion fruit will go well with this. A passion. Sorry. Fruit. A passion fruit sauce would also. Yes. yes. Passion fruit sauce, pineapple sauce. You can just get those ready syrups also in the market that you get. You know, um, the various brands that you get these days. And uh, mango, mango is coming. When mango starts, just puree the mango in a blender and then you just swirl it in. Yeah, so you can get um, mango and coconut. So just see how I'm layering it. You can either have plain coconut, otherwise let's make it a little interesting since we have some kids over here also. So I'm adding a little chocolate shavings, okay? So that looks, tastes nice. Liqueur, you can put Malibu in this. You can put... I don't know, whatever, if there's any other tropical liqueur you like. Yeah, any coconut flavor. Liqueur. Rum also works. If you put some Bacardi rum, you get a bit of that, you know, Malibu sipping on Bacardi, a little, beach, a little bit of beach. I remember that ad with the dancing on the beach. Um, you know, you just need a little umbrella. Don't forget a little umbrella. The cocktail umbrella can go in your glass and you feel like you're on the beach somewhere. <laughs> So yeah, we can do this. You can put some more coconut on top. Just gently mix it in. Just have a look at how I'm mixing it in so that because things will remain. You see how it's remaining on top? It's not sinking in. Just right. You see, it's not sinking in. Now this is the difference with a thicker cream versus a light cream. Um, with a so whipping cream. It makes cream. it a more creamier vis-a-vis -vis a fresh cream. Yeah, so it, it's just high. So it's thick, and you see everything is remaining and not really sinking to the bottom. Right. Okay. So coconut can have lots of nuts also. All kinds of nuts would go well with a coconut mm -hmm. into the freezer. And my freezer is looking like a gelato shop now. I will show you my freezer. There's lots of tubs there. So yeah, Vaisha, tell me. So I wanted to ask. Like, uh, if you make an ice cream with an ice cream maker, with the way you whip it yourself, what is the difference in texture? Um, there's no difference in, okay, so difference in texture, let's talk about overrun. If you wanna, now, you're thinking about a sponge cake, 
versus a brownie. Okay. The both That's cakes. Different. Okay. Yes, a brownie is dense. It's also a cake, and mm. a sponge cake is very airy. You put in those of you who are bakers. You put in one five hundred grams of mix of batter. You get in get two hundred grams volume of cake. You know, you'll say, uh, right. and that many slices. But you put a brownie, it'll only rise a little bit. Right. Commercial ice cream. Commercial ice cream because they have to make it cost effective has hundred percent air or overrun. Okay. Which means I put in one liter of mix into my machine, and it whips, whips so well, and also injects air, and you get out two hundred liter. I mean, two liters. One liter becomes two liters, which means your whole costing comes down. Okay. It's airier. It's fluffier. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it's not necessarily creamier. Gelato right. is the brownie. Mm -hmm. It only has forty percent air. So it's creamier and it's denser, more right. like a frozen mousse. Mm -hmm. Now the machine, the ice cream maker at home is really like a small gelato or artisanal ice cream which you're making. Right. Mm -hmm. So you are already at the brownie level. What I'm making now, I'm saving all that time, and because then you have to buy it. Ice cream machine also, and you have to start from scratch in ice cream machine. You've got to boil the milk. You have to do all that, and then you have time to churn it out. What you know? So no, we can't make. Uh, we can't put this ready mix into an ice cream machine and make it the way you're teaching us. You can. You can. So I would suggest not using so much cream. I would suggest using milk. Use half milk and half cream. Yeah. Yeah, because you don't. It'll it'll be. Or you need a more fluid mix. At home, we have an ice cream machine. We only use milk. We only use thickened milk, and we don't use any cream. So it turns out lighter. Yeah. So then you can do that also. So then that's low fat. Uh, you can do just milk. So just substitute the whole amount of cream in today's thing with milk. Okay. Right. Do we want to play a game, Varsha, while I get ready for the next one? Sure. So I want to throw ice cream flavors at you and different ones, and I want you to tell us the ingredients. Yes. So, so everyone can type in whatever favorite flavors they want. You've seen the basic, and I'm gonna to make sure you make notes also. Tell me. Let's go. Let's have some fun. So first, I want you to start with some unusual flavors. How about doing some masala chai flavor? Oh, masala chai. Yes. Um, so that's what I tell you. I can. Over time, I learned to make anything that I ate or drank into an ice cream or a gelato. Masala chai, very simple. You've got your basic base, okay? So now you understand it's very mathematical. Right. One cup of pani into your on a stove in a saucepan. Mm -hmm. Add your two teaspoons of chai leaves. You, um, you know all the spices that you normally have: cardamom, pepper, what is cinnamon, cloves. Just boil it the way you do for normal chai. Uh, for you know, five minutes, ten minutes, till the water reduces to half. Good. As I said, you don't want too much water going into your mix. I'm making a concentrate. Right. Reduce it. Let it cool so it still keeps infusing flavor, and then strain it. Mm -hmm. So you'll have half a cup of concentrated chai liquid, chai masala. Put that. Put that into your basic mix, like I did with the espresso or the coffee. Masala chai done. So it'll be a nice uh, change from a uh, kulfi. Serving it with your Indian food, if you serve the masala chai flavor, it'll turn out very well. Yeah. Say, you say, can serve it with some parleji biscuits. Be a little trendy. Yeah. And put them in some mitti ka bhar, and you know, put parleji biscuits into it. Wow. Yes, that's a good idea. How about uh, this uh, newly trending matcha tea? Matcha tea. Matcha tea is from Japan. So yeah. matcha tea, you get the matcha powder, which is a gorgeous green color. Mm -hmm. um, so to your basic mix, I would add you just have to go uh, because each each brand is different. I think two to three tablespoons of matcha tea. You can just mix it in raw, mm -hmm. and um, it comes out really well. That's how you do cakes also with matcha. Okay. You get the matcha powder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what about uh, an apple pie? I apple see. pie, and that reminds me, my gelato. Sorry, my gelato is melting over here. Okay, I'll just interrupt you, Basha, because I oh. just um, I want to show people all the ladies here the texture. I want to scoop it out, show, serve it to you in a nice um, cone. 
and then I'm going to come back to your game. That's the thing with ice cream, you know, temperatures, you can't you just have to do it. Okay. So, Z, let's close up. First of all, can you see the texture? Yeah. Okay, that's ice cream. It's not a frozen mousse. I want you to be happy with that texture. Okay. I'm going to scoop it for you now. And give me a minute, bring it together. Sorry, it's over melted. And that is. That is my perfect scoop. Okay. Got a nice scoop. In that goes, that is gelato, that is ice cream. Let me just stay out of school. Not what cream. This is what I was having in the video also. So there you go. See the texture, it's formed a perfect ball. It's in a cone mm -hmm. and um, so do you sprinkle something on top? Do you sprinkle some coffee powder? Um, you want to put some more on top? You can. You can just put some chocolate shavings on top. And this is ready to be eaten. Wow. Okay? Yeah. So that is the basic consistency. What I also want to show you is, would you like to see some freezing chocolate? Yes, definitely. Do you also make uh, those uh, strawberries with them? With the freezing chocolate or it's just for the chocolate. chocolate you can use normal chocolate um just liquid chocolate and then put the strawberries in it yeah the whole idea with the freezing chocolate is your chocolate bar coating or when you go to an ice cream shop and they give that you know that little shell yeah. and that cracks um right. the whole idea is it freezes really quickly it touches the ice cream okay it freezes okay so that is my ice cream i'm gonna put it in the freezer and you're gonna head to my store and I will come back to your game. I want to put it nicely on this so that you can see how it works. Okay. Come along. Deal with the cabinet. So I'm just going to show you. I have pre made it um, because it will take me 10 minutes. Simple thing. Um, one cup of chopped chocolate. I just use normal Indian chocolate or morde or whatever. One cup of chocolate to two tablespoons of um, coconut oil. You can use olive oil as well. You need any fat. The two tablespoons coconut oil, one, um, one cup of chocolate, double boiler system. For those of you who are new dealing with chocolate, you can't heat chocolate directly. So water inside steam or glass bowl on top. I've just melted the chocolate together and the coconut oil together. Okay, and now I'm going to get my ice cream. So it's liquid. It's in a liquid form and I'm going to get my ice cream and freeze it. Just stay right there. Any questions, um, Basha? Is it like the normal amul chocolate or do you use the cooking chocolate here? Cooking chocolate, because Amul chocolate has too many ingredients added, which right. affects the whole melting point. Right. Okay, so more, I've used a small day, but you, you get a lot of artisanal gourmet chocolates now. Yeah. And um, come along to my freezer. So it needs a quick zap in the freezer. It is getting hard, but if you want to be really fast, say you're in a busy ice cream shop, you can also see my ice cream shop happening here, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, show them up and down so you've got lots of tubs of ice cream there that's setting there that's setting there and the chocolate is i'm just going to put it in the freezer yes yes and it's frozen it's hard i'm going to crack it for you so, so that's the person asking is it cold pressed coconut oil yes cold pressed coconut oil okay. and look at that Wow. Can you see that? Yeah, it's frozen. You see, it's got a, there, it cracked. You see? Okay, yeah. so there you go. That's nice and hard and crunchy. And that is how you can also do choco bar. So basically all the ice cream we've done today, yeah, put the same little molds, okay? Freeze them. Take this liquid uh, dipping chocolate into a little longish container. Dip your popsicle inside. Um, you'll need some kind of wire rack to 
you know, let the excess chocolate uh, drip out. And then just put it in the freezer, in a tray, and you have choco bar. Wow, superb. Homemade. And you see the ice cream is still holding, it's in the cone, it's still not melting. Yeah. And the chocolate is there, so I want you to see all that, what the end product is. Yes, it's really nice, so artisanal and nice. Yeah. Okay, so folks, that is your finished product. And I will put this back in the freezer and be back with you. Right, so back to our game. Let's go. What else? So I have lemongrass ice cream. Lemongrass, nice. Um, okay, lemongrass, I would... Ooh, lemongrass, you need to make an infusion. You need to infuse your cream with lemongrass. So you need to chop the lemongrass um, roughly, smash it, chop it so you get the maximum flavor out of it. You need to boil your cream or milk with the lemongrass. So it won't cuddle with the uh, lemongrass, uh, the milk won't cuddle with the lemongrass added to it? No, no, lemongrass doesn't because lemongrass is not really lemon. It's not lemon. It's mm -hmm. just the flavor. Otherwise, make a pani. Like I told you about the chai, you can yeah. do a little lemongrass tea. That's also a better option. One cup of water with some lemongrass, smash fresh lemongrass. Make sure your lemongrass is flavorful. You see in India, lemongrass is not fresh, at least the market one, um, compared to what you would get in Bangkok. And then just, you know, reduce it, get a strong uh, lemongrass infused tea and then mix it into your mix. Like the dark pani or so you have lemongrass water, basically. So we have pan flavor. Pan, yeah. I had a disaster with that once. Okay, so pan, you need gulkans. You need um, the pan leaves, finely chopped. And you would just do a basic white mix and then you would mix it in basically. Yeah, or you can blend the, with your, you can just blend in gulkans uh, into the mix and then add chopped, finely chopped pan leaves so that the flavor is not overly par, uh, overpowering. That's nice. So once in uh, Nirula's, I tried this bubblegum flavor. Okay. So bits and pieces of bubblegum in it. The kids used to love it. Bubble gum. So now um, we are getting into, so you need to use food color, okay? Um, anything which you don't, so pan also, you would need to use a light green food color or something. Um, bubble gum, you just, um, strawberry or you get a bubble gum essence. Now the commercial flavors, we all use essence in the market, okay? You get, these days you get organic essences also. So there is a bubble gum essence. Mm -hmm. There's a light pink, bubble gum pink color, and then chopped pieces of, Real bubble gum. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You make it sound so simple. I mean, once you get the basics. <laughs> so it's, it's all in the head. It's all in the perception. Life is simple. Okay. Then. So I'm, while I'm talking to you, I'm also making the um, chocolate version. Okay. So same thing. Cream gone in and condensed milk going in. And I'll tell you when I come to the cocoa. So next flavor. So next flavor in the... Um, about a banoffee pie? Yes. So banoffee pie, you need to add mashed bananas into your base. When we come to the cheesecake flavor right after this, right. Um, we will basically replace the cream cheese with bananas, with mashed bananas. Mm -hmm. And um, that, and then we're going to add um, the pie bit. So pie bit is your digestive biscuits. Okay. So digestive biscuits go in and banana goes in and you need a nice salted caramel or a toffee sauce. Okay. Yeah, you need a nice toffee sauce, rolled in, banana in the base um, and digestive biscuits for the cheesecake, for the tart effect. Come on folks, chocolate, you want Nutella, you want brownie, you want, where are all the questions? Okay, any more interesting ones? Otherwise, we get on with the chocolate. So, the cocoa. You use microgreens um, or ice cream? No, you can't use microgreens. <laughs> um, you can do, sorry, uh, microgreens won't work. You see, I understand um, the question. You can be gourmet, you can be experimental, but some things work, in my opinion, and some things don't work. Talking about savory flavors, 
um, I did do a few ones, um, a cheese flavor, so Parmesan cheese um, ice cream. And I served it with a, you know, pears cooked in red wine sauce. Um, and I served it as a savory course. I did a pop-up dinner that was my third course. And people actually thought I'd made a mistake, like, why are we getting ice cream now? So you can do savory ice cream and serve it as like an appetizer or something. How would you do a savory ice cream? Reduce your condensed milk to half. Okay. Okay. Reduce your condensed milk to half, which means you need some sugar, but not all the sugar. You are adding more solid. You are adding grated cheese or feta cheese or goat's cheese to mm -hmm. compensate for the reduction in solid. Right. Okay. And just blend it together the way I did it, mix it together, set it, and then play around. You can add herbs in that, you can add whatever else you want in that. That's my basic rule for a savory. You can do a tomato version, you can do a Bloody Mary version. Um, you know, what are the other things they do? So I had tried goat cheese, cashew, caramel once. Goat cheese, cashew, and caramel. caramel. Nice. So you see, it's like a salad. It's a contrast of flavor. So one, uh, and then, um, so goat cheese, same thing. I would reduce the condensed milk to half. Add in the goat's cheese, just mix it in. You can crumble some goat's cheese also. And um, then you add a caramel sauce to it. You add some cashew to it. You can add some microgreens. Once you're doing a savory flavor, you can add, but I just think herbs will not freeze well. You see herbs, once they freeze, they're gonna become very, you know, that catch, catch, how do you say? They're going to become sloppy. So avoid but putting... This is not sounding very interesting to me to put it in an ice cream. Sorry, which one? Microgreens is not sounding very interesting to yeah. me. Yeah, and you're going to get wilted herbs. So that will not work. You can garnish it. Do a savory thing. Your scoop, you can garnish with microgreens. Or one of your lovely edible flowers, Vaisha. I need to see those flowers sometime. So I, I feel a mint flavor works very well with herbs, like mint and chocolate. Okay. Mint and chocolate. Yes, mint. You get mint essence. Mm. Sorry, I'll just be there. I'm just going to get my blender. Um, creme de menthe also works well. Yes, creme de menthe works well. If you want to do like an after 80 kind of flavor, you get um, mint essence. You get the mint color. Okay. And then you just put in the chocolate shavings the way I had um, put it. Mm -hmm. So you get a mint color, mint essence, and then you put chocolate shavings for an after eight kind of flavor. Yeah. So I'm just going to interrupt you, Varsha. I'm just blending in the chocolate. The cocoa will not dissolve by itself in a cold mix. You need to keep it. Sorry, we just lost you. Can you repeat it? So we just lost you what you were talking we just missed out on that yeah just um, okay so what i said was cocoa will not mix well by itself in a cold mix mm -hmm. and since we are not baking it we need to use the electric beater or a whisk very vigorously okay so cocoa we put in a little hot water and yeah. then and we just melt it and then once you cool the water you can just add it to this like good idea it's like coffee it's like dissolving any powder very good idea see i learned something this is what i like about doing things like this we all learn from each other i loved your avocado ice cream idea earlier by the way so yeah um, folks we were talking about an avocado ice cream earlier varsha and myself um which she had tried so what i want to also tell you is you can make any smoothie in a blender, you can do avocado, you can do, uh, you know, banana, strawberries and stuff and do a dairy free, um, dairy free ice cream as well. So you basically make any, Sorry, yeah. you can do frozen banana uh, base for that, no? Yeah, frozen banana base, so it's dairy free. Um, you can use almond milk, you can basically make a smoothie. Um, and if you don't want any dairy, you put frozen bananas, frozen strawberries. By the way, strawberries, the last of it, freeze your strawberries, yeah? Um, so just come here, I'm thinking chocolate Oreo mix. The kids might like this. There's chocolate mix gone in. And uh, just put in Oreo cookies. 
You can put in brownies, you can do a Nutella, you know, just swirls of Nutella. Now, if you use Nutella, Nutella is sweet, okay? So I would suggest just reducing the condensed milk by 20 to 30 um, grams, okay? Because I'm using an unsweetened cocoa for the base. And uh, there you go. That's done. You can add whatever else. You can add brownies. You can add nuts, um, peanuts. Hazelnuts go very well. Yes, hazelnuts go very well. Talking about hazelnuts, let me tell you a Snickers ice cream. Hmm. How would you do a peanut butter? You see, I can talk till tomorrow morning. How would you do peanut butter? Like a Snickers ice cream. So you basically, in your mix, you need to, again, use a whisk or a blender and put in, say, one fourth cup of peanut butter. So you have a base that tastes of peanut butter. Use chocolate shavings or even my freezing chocolate can actually be put inside the mix. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have a Snickers flavor, peanut butter and chocolate. Wow. Yeah, chocolate shavings, peanut butter base, add some salted peanuts in there. Mm -hmm. And you have a delicious uh, peanut butter. Yeah. Natasha, like uh, somebody asked, what is the uh, portion of ice cream that we're doing? What is the grammage? If you see the grammage, it would be about 500 grams. I'll just show you the quantity. So basically, this would give you about 10 to 12 scoops. Okay. Yeah, so 500 grams. Um, you saw the tiramisu. Yes. Yeah. The tiramisu, if you just want to see also, I took up two scoops, three, four, five. Yeah, I get 10 scoops from, from this. Okay, 10 scoops. So last flavor before we move on to the other one, a mimosa flavor. I think there was a question about how much chocolate was put in the cocoa powder. How much unsweetened cocoa powder did you One fourth cup. One fourth cup. So that is shared in the recipes, uh, Aarti. The quantities. Okay, so chocolate can be, you can make it as dark as you want, as light as you want. Let's just do a quick thing on chocolate. Um, you can do a dark chocolate, you can do a light chocolate, so you can even put less chocolate than what I put. You can put two tablespoons of chocolate and do a milk chocolate. You can do a dark chocolate and go even darker and put not double because the liquid will not absorb the powder, but maybe one tablespoon more of chocolate. Okay, so you get a really dark, like a mud pie kind of thing. Crumble in your brownies, crumble in your cookies, nuts. Um, so at Mamma Mia those days, you know, people used to just love chocolate flavor. We used to have like six flavors just of chocolate. Wow. Ferrero Rocher. How do you do a Ferrero Rocher? Use the same base that I've just made. Yeah. Swirl in some Nutella mm -hmm. and you need crushed hazelnut. Okay. So that is Ferrero Rocher. Oh. Um, yeah. Tell me. So how about doing a, a salted caramel? Salted caramel, you need to make the salted caramel sauce and then um, you do a basic white base, a basic vanilla base and then you swirl it in or you mix the sauce in your base. I wanted to know how to do the salted caramel sauce, if you can just tell us. Oh. <laughs> salted caramel sauce, the recipe I can share in the WhatsApp group later. You have to cook your sugar, uh, bring it, I don't have exact measurements on hand. You know, cook the sugar in water till it comes and caramelizes to a golden, to a golden um, color. Mm -hmm. Take it off the heat and you need to whisk in just liquid cream and you get a toffee sauce or a, and you add salt, a good one teaspoon of salt. And that's when you get a salted caramel. It has to be sea salt for the salted caramel? No, normal salt will do, but yeah, of course salt. I use Himalayan pink salt in my kitchen. Um, so I do Himalayan pink salt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we're doing the cheesecake now. I'll just wrap up. This is the last one. Yeah. It's a great base. So you, you've got a chocolate base. You've got a coffee base. You've got a coconut base. Very different stuff. And then you can play around with it. And we'll now do the cheesecake base. A zesty lime cheesecake. Okay, so what I want you to see is I have reduced the condensed milk from 200 to 140 mm -hmm. and I have added cream cheese in. Okay, so basic science, just like in cakes, if I add on more cream cheese, it's going to become very heavy. 
So I've reduced some quantity of um, solid from the condensed milk. So I've replaced that with some cream cheese. And to compensate for the sweetness, I have added four teaspoons of icing sugar or powder sugar or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Varsha, did you, um, uh, is that clear how I've explained it? Or do yeah. I need to? The reason is I want the viewer, everyone here and the participants to be able to create their own flavors and understand the science. So then you don't need me after today. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I have my whipping cream here, 250 ml. I'll just put 140 grams. And um, then we move on. Okay, tell me. So yeah, so Varsha, these days, apart from gelato was my first um, baby. Then I sold the brand, Mama Mia, it's still going on. Mm -hmm. And then I got into cooking. Yeah, so what inspired you to become a chef? Uh, yeah, so that's my interesting story because, okay, this was work, this was business and I grew, you know, then I sold the brand. Um, I met my husband, got married, we were living in Singapore. But while I was traveling to Italy for gelato and I was eating all the gorgeous food, you know, you were talking about your husband and I had some experience with an Italian chef. Right. Huh. Uh, so you know how particular Italians are about getting their food perfect. Hmm. And... Um, so this was a time when restaurants and ingredients in India were still not so available. Mm -hmm. And I tasted food which I had never tasted before. And I was like, wow. Okay. Now, they say a way to a man's, man's heart is through his stomach. <laughs> but you know what? Think about your own stomach first, ladies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought about my own stomach because I used to come back home and I would want to eat all those flavors and all that food and not the dal chawal sabzi or the Indianized continental food made at my parents' house. Right. So I had to satisfy my own stomach. So I had to cook. Um, I was struggling. I didn't know basics. I, I would bring back ingredients and the food would not taste nice. Believe me, I have been told off how bad my food is. Wow. Um, MasterChef Australia started, Nigella, all these TV shows started, you know, 2006, 2007. Mm -hmm. And I saw that there was so much more to food than just filling in your tummy. Right. You know? um, coming from a traditional Indian, a traditional home, um, big joint family, Kana was always a chore. You know, there was staff, there was my mom, there were other women. It was not something we had to get involved with. It was not glamorous. Right. So I said, okay, I need to learn. And so I'm, I'm just fumbling about. You see, you see that movie, Varsha, um, Julia Roberts, Eve Pray Love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so do you remember the part she goes off to eat in Italy? Right. Yeah. So that's what happened. So I said, okay, I saw the movie, I saw it three times, and I said, that's it, I'm going to Italy to go. Sorry, I have to get some food. I used to go anyway for work and stuff, but I need to learn the right ways. My message to you is it's never late to learn. I'm not a culinary school student, I, you know, I'm not a thing. But I found a passion and I said, I need to learn it the right way. Mm -hmm. And again, I just did I amateur courses and I just uh, learned. And then I experimented. I self-taught myself a lot. So while I'm talking, 100 grams of cream cheese going in. But yeah, so self-experimenting, learning. And then I realized this is what I want to do, you know. Um, so it's never too late to learn. It's never too late to try a new project. Um, Failures happened along the way. I, you know, I, I started catering and then I realized I don't like being in the kitchen all day. Uh, I'm just with myself and with the staff. I want to people connect. So mm -hmm. I got into teaching and everyone loved my food and said, oh, teach us, how do we do it? Because, you know, who wants to eat dal chawal today, right? To your, I don't think um, today's younger generation. Uh, they want to be And there's so much exposure now through the net. And exactly. Traveling. And the biggest stress of every woman is khana mein kya hai? what's for dinner. Yes. So <laughs> how many of you are agreeing with me over there? Yeah. Yes. Uh, khana mein kya bina hai? So, 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 struggle and they say kuch bhi banwa do. And what is that kuch bhi? Yeah. <laughs> Even if you have a chef or a maharaj who aayega bhaadi ji khana mein. I've seen my mother go through that. Like, you know, wo man kuch ho. Kuch bhi kuch lo. So I said, okay, let me, why don't I make life easy for everyone? So they don't have to go through all the struggles I went through and everyone else goes through. 
and I got into teaching and I got into workshops and started my Instagram page and I'm still learning. So you never stop learning. I still do workshops. I still try and do internships with, you know, the big chefs. Um, I learned food photography. I Instagram started. I didn't know what Instagram was. People said start a page. I had two children that time. I was busy in the baby world. I did food photography courses in Bangalore. And um, I had lots of workshops being cancelled. I had food not turning out right in my classes. And I have all these late, you know, people looking at me. But um, so that's my message. If you have a passion and if you want to start up something, get on with it. You have one life. Failures will happen. Hitches will happen. But, you know, at least you know that you did what you wanted to do. So this is a very important learning that, you know, you have to, as the Japanese call it, your ikigai. Exactly. You have to follow your passion in life and then success will follow. I mean, there will be small glitches along the way, but you have to take that plunge. You have to take that risk. Exactly. So that is your purpose. Um, I put four teaspoons and I was talking. Okay, I may put more. Four teaspoons icing sugar or normal sugar going in to compensate for the loss. So yes, I did. That was my ikigai. And that's why I also teach you know, people and friends that find your ikigai and anything can be learned. I did not know how to cook seven, eight years ago. Trust me, a lot of you here know me from before. My mother herself is from Kaase Kaala Blana Siki, okay? I used to fight with my mother because um, she would say, kya karo ki baad mein? Um, So it's never late. Find your ikigai and learn. Every, any skill, once you have a passion, train yourself for the skill. Right. Um, okay. So we've got the cream cheese base. Now, talking, I'm doing a lemon version of the cream cheese. You can do a strawberry, a mango. You just need to puree fruits, strawberries or fresh strawberries in a blender. Don't add water. Puree your fresh mango and you just swirl it in when you put it into the base, into your container. This is my basic cream cheese mix. Let's get on with some nice pucker up lime flavor. I have a nice green lime here. I'm a big fan of creating a uh, lemon zest. I add it to all my salads, all my soups. By the way, talking about lemongrass, my tip, if you don't have lemongrass at home, you want to make some Thai food, you know, you're, it's, it's already late. Lemon zest is my, it's not equal, but calm chal jata hai. Yeah, so lemon zest for lemongrass in Thai food. Really, you have not used a beater here. You're just doing it on your own. Or was it the beaten cream already? The cream was beaten already. Okay. Yeah, Varsha, the cream was already beaten. Mm. Okay, and I've just uh, blended it well together or you can beat it. Yeah? Let me just use a whisk. There, I'll just use a whisk to break all the lumps. The cream was pre-beaten and it's smelling nice. That lemon zest is coming through really well. I'm just going to slice the line and get. So talking about enjoying cooking, that's what I learned from the Italians. Is, you know, as my, so the whole Mediterranean culture and um, where cooking is as, enjoy, um, is as joyful and as entertaining and cooking together is as entertaining as eating. Yes. For Italians, I think food is their like their canvas. It's like they're painting. So they do so much passion. They are not into partying and drinking. For them, they'll enter the house and they'll say, what's cooking? And then they'll analyze, they'll come open your you know, pot of food. Ki kya hai under, you know? So, mm -hmm. so that some of that, I've gone uh, and eaten at this Italian restaurant at yeah. Imperial Delhi called San Gimiano. So there they play yeah. the thinking plate in front of me. So I said, what yeah. is this? It's very fancy. I'm right here. Yeah. With all the, you know, it had uh, balsamic cream and some herbs and very nicely decorated. So said, yeah. Since you've ordered your food and you're waiting for it, we want you to think about your food. So we have put a thinking plate in front of you. We don't want to leave your table empty. And the Italian yeah came to explain me because I'm always asking too many questions and he came to explain me. So he says, I want you to think about the food before it's put yeah. in front of you. Beautiful. You see, and that's why when your husband went to the Italian restaurant, 
Yeah. So I'm learning what happens. Don't with everybody while you're cooking. So my husband had gone to, um, so he had gone for work to San Francisco, and after a long day of work, he was very tired. And while he was walking back to his hotel, he had this very nice uh, whiff of pizzas, and he decided to go to this small pizzeria run by Italians. He ordered his pizza, and when the pizza came, it looked very nice. You know, you eat with your eyes first. and he was like he rubbed his hand in anticipation to pick up the slice and he just asked the guy to say, give him condiments of uh, chili flakes and some tabasco and he just added it and the chef was so angry he just took the pizza away my husband was like shocked he said how could you even add you've spoiled my pizza you have added chili flakes without even tasting it So that's how passionate Italians are about their food. Exactly. So there you go. Um, yeah, it's like you know, for designer, the kapre me if you made it red and I decide to add a green dupatta to it, you know, the designer will be like, okay, that's not going together. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's what I learned, and that's my inspiration, and that's what I'm enjoying sharing with people here in India now. Um, you know cooking international flavors when i was in singapore and that's what my book is about also we lived in singapore for four years and uh, i learned about filipino cooking indonesian cooking um those kind of things and yeah i just kept learning and that's what i'm enjoying sharing with people now here yeah so i have my cream cheese mix um it's tasting nice and lemony nice. okay and i have digested biscuits here yeah okay okay just simple digested biscuits you can also use a cheesecake crust which is digested biscuits and melted butter combined where i'm trying to reduce the fat content right. so there you go cheesecake into cheesecake without the crust okay so simple digested biscuits lemon gone in you can zest in a little more lemon if you want um otherwise just pour it in Okay. There is actually a lot of the lines has has settled at the bottom, so that will come on the top. And that is a simple cheesecake base. Then you can add in whatever fruit variation you want, any berry sauce, any compote, those ready blueberry sauces that you get, um, right. you know, in the market for fillings. And once it's done, I'm going to. when i'm when it freezes and i'm ready to serve i'll share the pictures later on the whatsapp group i'm going to decorate it with sliced lemons sliced limes right you can eat like a uh, candy the lemon slices they also taste well yes you can candy the lemon slices yeah. now one thing i want to say is fruit pieces will freeze in the freezer so any ice cream that you have do not put fresh fruit pieces Mm -hmm. Because you're going to suddenly get a bad surprise where arm and you've lost a tooth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's one mistake. Mm -hmm. Do not put fresh fruit pieces. You want to put fresh fruit. Put it on top when you're ready to serve. That's a very good advice. Yeah, I have seen bad experiences happen <laughs> with a tooth. Okay, so that into my freezer as well. And um, I'll be right back for five space. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm here. Tell me. So we are done with all the four ice creams. Can we move on to food photography? Because I hear that you are very good. You're self-taught in that. And how has food photography helped? How was it helpful in your business? Okay, so as you said, you eat with your eyes. Right. And I only learned food photography three, four years ago because. something called instagram changed all our lives right our uh, life was actually peaceful and less pressure before that mm -hmm. so people said okay you got to take good pictures of your food you know yeah. um and you don't need a fancy camera hmm. so yeah so before if you want to learn a bit about my insta uh, photography you can check it out on my instagram page that is natasha chelmi mm -hmm. um you will see how i've come along and um i took a course i took a few courses self taught myself okay and then so instagram is great because you just follow people who are experts in their field mm -hmm. and you get inspiration okay 
yeah, so that's what I want to say about food. I also do workshops uh, teaching uh, about food photography. If you want more information on that later, that's what I do. I learn and I teach now. So let's go. I will show you some simple tips and tricks that you can use with your phone. Yeah. Even a simple dal or a simple dal chawal can be made to look glam. You don't need a fancy looking dish. Mm -hmm. A few tricks and we sort it out. Okay. So I am going to show you to add one or two more flavors because people have been requesting. Definitely. Yeah. There is this Madagascar flavor ice cream. Madagascar is just chocolate. You're, it's, the, it's, the, it's the chocolate that you put inside, Madagascar chocolate. Right. So you got to get some fancy chocolate from Madagascar. Or honestly, it's just a marketing um, thing. Hmm. Um, so it's just about the quality of cocoa or chocolate that you put inside. Because cho chocolate and cocoa comes from all over the world and every country has its unique speciality. So Madagascar is Madagascar cocoa in it. And also somebody asked which weighing scale are you using? Weighing scale doesn't have a name. It's something which is made in China. <laughs> 300 rupees on Amazon. Okay, so again, I'm very simple. <laughs> There's no nam nishana on it. Okay, yeah. Do you make a jamun ice cream? Yes, good one. Jamun ice cream. So you need to, obviously, the jamun has a seed. So de seed the jamun. Just puree it in a blender. So you make a jamun puree with the chilka, with the things you get with me. Hmm. And then you mix it. I have given a mango ice cream flavor, so that would be the same. Just make a puree and mix it into your base. But the mango is sweet and jamun has a different taste. So, you know, just to, you need to add more sugar. Oh, so you need to add more sugar based on your taste. Right. So just taste the mix and add some more icing sugar into your base. Okay. Also, how about uh, these, uh, how are these sorbets different from an ice cream? Sorbet, how is it different from an ice cream? You just have to eat it. Um, yeah, sorbet is milk free. It is milk free. Um, it's just fruit, water, and sugar. So it is dairy free. It is vegan. It is lactose intolerant. It's good for lactose intolerant people. How do you make a sorbet? You cook fresh fruit pulp, sugar, and water um, in a saucepan till it all combines into a nice, um, you know, homogenized syrup. And then you freeze that, freeze it for three to four hours till it's um, solidified, scrape it with a fork, mm -hmm. and then freeze it again. Okay. If you have an ice cream machine, uh, and those of you who do have an ice cream machine, just it's the same thing. You make a syrup with the fresh fruit, the sugar, and water, mm -hmm. put it into your ice cream machine, mm -hmm. and that will do the churning for you. Okay. So while talking to you, I just remembered uh, you're from Calcutta and they have, you have get these ice cream sandesh. Uh, you wow, get right. Yeah, I have no idea how to make that. <laughs> okay. Sorry, you didn't mention on that part. <laughs> also, can you substitute sugar with the jaggery? Ice cream sandesh, sorry. Now that I'm just putting two and two together, you would basically put your sandesh ka jo chena hai, the sandesh mix, the chena. Right. Your base that you've made today, right? put it in a dish, in like a flat borosil dish. Mm -hmm. Mix in your chena, the sandesh base. I have no idea how to make sandesh, but I'm just guessing that chena, sweetened yeah. chena. Yeah. Mix yeah. it all so you get a nice thick, thick ricotta style thing. Right. Freeze that and then cut it. Okay, okay. Great. So you can use normal borosil dishes for the same ice creams you made today. Mm -hmm. And then you can cut them in squares also. And I, just one last flavor. It's Pani Puri flavor. <laughs> okay, I have no idea about that one. I'm not sure for some Pani Puri flavor, you would have to make a sorbet. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just putting two together with big, so there's no dairy. So you'll put the imli, literally like a Pani. Mm -hmm. I think you just freeze, you just make a Puchka ka Pani and just freeze it and I think okay. you have to reduce it, I guess. You'll have to reduce it uh, in flame. Yeah, you have to reduce it, put it in your chana, or you freeze it, and then with a the fork, just scrape it. Right. You can make popsicles, pani puri popsicles. You're basically your puchka ka pani as it is. Put it in popsicle molds. Hmm. And both the popsicle ban chai you get a popsicle, pani puri popsicle. Great. So now we can move on to the food photography. So for that, you need to step out. Into some natural light. We will, yes, we will head to my living room and my balcony area. Okay, yes. so 
If anyone wants to have a water break, a drink break, a tea break, I need exactly two to three minutes to just set up. And we are heading to my living area now, okay? Just for everyone's knowledge, we'll keep the WhatsApp group on for the next couple of days. In case you have any questions, Natasha has added to both the WhatsApp groups. And in case you have any questions, you can post in that. Please avoid posting any other messages uh, because uh, then that will just kill the purpose of the WhatsApp group. Any questions you have related to today's session, feel free to post it. Maybe you try it out tonight or tomorrow, uh, the, making the ice cream or the gelato. Do that. And, uh, share it with us. Okay, I'm here. That first thing, if you're going to set up. First thing, if you want, now this can apply to any food, okay? I'm just using um, ice cream clay because we made that. You need natural light. Hence, do not take pictures in your kitchen. You will not get the same look, okay? So I, this is where I should put all my pictures, my Instagram pictures, my cookbook pictures. I've done myself also in my cookbook, Fast Fresh Flavorful over here okay the idea is you're getting natural light it could be a window doesn't have to be a balcony step number one step number two you need good backdrops okay you can even use i have these vinyls from amazon 200 rupees just stuck onto a simple cardboard okay all from amazon you just look up ball vinyls you'll get these simple things or you can just use solid napkins and make this your background. Napkins, table mats, tablecloths, and then you put your food on top of this, okay? So you wanna let the food shine, not your crockery or your living room or your dining room, table, tablecloth. So understand it's like dressing up. You can't wear lal, pila, hara, everything in your outfit, okay? So if your food has to shine, your crockery has to be a neutral color. Your background has to be a neutral color for the pop of color to shine, okay? So have a look at the crockery I have. It could be dark, it could be light, okay? And then I have neutral backdrops. Some props, a thermocol board helps to add a little more light when in a dark place. I will show you editing later if you take a restaurant picture, but this is for the food that you cook at home and a napkin to add some texture. Okay, again, very neutral shades, nothing over the top. I'm going to bring the ice cream and I'm going to show you how to style it. Guys, like how there are phobias, there are also, there's also a word called philia, so love of something. And a person who loves ice cream is called Frigophila. Oh, that's a new one. I had no idea. Okay, now, ice cream or food, you want to look natural. You don't want to look like it's, you know, synthetic and perfectly put together. I mean, food, it has to be eaten. It has to be messy. You have to be licking your fingers, yeah? So don't look, aim for that picture perfect. Look. Um, so right, let me go to that. So I'm just going to touch this up. Now it's ice cream, so I need to work a little fast. Just focus on that. Yeah. Yeah. Go back a bit. Show the whole, whole set. Okay, and the wind is blowing, so I need to close this. Now, if the sunlight is too much, you can use, if you have window uh, tinted windows, you can play around with the light with that. Okay? Right. So we have, now it's ice cream. So I have my gelato there. I have some cones here. So I might just break some cones, put it here and there, or the whole cone, but it'll, it might look too dominating. So, you know, make a mess. Make a mess, it's tiramisu. So what is related to tiramisu? You need cookies. So put some cookies here and there. You can just have it there. You can break it, make a mess. Okay, enjoy making a mess. Now, we need a napkin for texture. I might just play around with the, it's looking nice. Just add one napkin and it'll make a big difference to your picture. Take a scooper. It's related to the gelato. Okay, it's a little dug in, but okay. 
if you are, I will share some pictures with you. So I might put it this way. And I'm showing the texture of the gelato also. How do we click now? That is definitely looking like it's out of, to make a mess. You have cocoa powder everywhere and let's click. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah? Yes, I yes. might clean these edges, but you see what is shining? It is, now if you want to show the texture, so styling is one thing. And then you see, I like to show that it's been eaten into, I like to show the texture. I might even also just go really close so you can see the texture of the jala. You feel like you're diving right in. Mm -hmm. Or you go here, show some cones, and that is done. Okay? So that is that. Now, you've taken the picture. Let me show you the picture. I'm being very brief. This normally takes half an hour for one picture. Okay. Um, how do we edit this picture? Okay. So I want to first show you some other pictures that I have taken. Um, and then I will, sorry, just, where is this? It's just a short background. Natasha, since you said it's going to take half an hour, usually it takes half an hour, the ice cream will start melting. So ice cream will come right in the end. Okay. Okay, and then, um, so we, that's why you have the setting ready and then the ice cream comes. Where are my recent pictures? Okay, just take out my recent pictures. Now, if this was Kana, okay, I'm just gonna show you. So I have a white background. Why did I use a white background? Because my ice cream is a dark color. Now, look at this picture to show the backdrop. This was, I used a blue backdrop. I added some coffee. Hmm. Here also I can add my, this is the backdrop. Okay, this is from Amazon. And in the same look, add a scoop, add that. Okay, mango, I did a gray background because white would look, uh, it won't go. Are you seeing how the food is shining? Right. A bit of mint leaves, a bit of mango, same style. Mm -hmm. Now this was a simple chana. Mm. You see, I've torn the paratha. I didn't make it absolutely perfect. Yeah. I use a dark backdrop. This you can get professionally also, or just, you know, wood. A little napkin for um, a texture. What is connected with the dish? Dhaniya patta, nibu. The nibu is squeezed. It's been used. And the green chili. And the green chili. But you see how nice, and see how the frame is done, the picture. There's not too much. The focus is on the main dish. Right. Again, it's a blue plate, but it's not a red plate. Yeah. This, I also explained the strawberry, how I, so this is the strawberry puree I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this, you, ladies, uh, strawberry still in season, you can just puree it in a mixie. And this was a strawberry gelato I did. Fresh mint leaves, strawberries on the side, a little bit of, you see it's dripping over there. So it doesn't look perfect, yet you want to dig into it. What do you think, Varsha? Yes, very, very well done. Okay, I want to show you some editing now. So simple thing. Um, now we've taken this picture because if you're in a restaurant, that is the first question people ask. If the lighting is not right, um, how do you edit it? Okay, so we make a note, three simple tools. You go to edit. First thing you would do is brighten. You see exposure? Yeah. yeah. So you will brighten or reduce the brightness of your picture. Exposure, don't get confused with too many things. Then you go to saturation. Saturation means what tomato is green. green. That is how saturation works. It's color. Saturation. Maybe my chocolate is not looking so dark and I want it darker. So I will increase the saturation. And the whole color has come. The cookies were very white initially. Now they're looking very peachish. And okay, so saturation. It's very good for salads and for anything which has fresh vegetables. After saturation, go to warmth. Warmth adds a yellow tone. 
for me right now, it's looking very white. It's looking like it's very cold, the weather. And I want a warm weather because we're doing ice cream. You won't have ice cream in cold weather. So I'm gonna add warmth. You want a cozy feeling, you add warmth. Everything becomes nice and yellowy and cozy. Brightness, saturation, warmth, vignette is your last one. Vignette. I'm using a normal, yeah, iPhone. I think most phones have this. Just vignette means the edges get dark and what is in the center stands out. So if you all have your phones handy, you can actually play along with me right now. So vignette means the edges are getting dark because you want to see what's on the side, but that's an accessory. You want to see what the main product is. And you see this whole texture of the ice cream is really standing out. I will share these pictures on um, the WhatsApp group. Yeah. So vignette, these four things are what I suggest you use. Now I have one more before and after if we have time. Um, this was the before. You probably, I don't know how much you can see. And this was the after. Can you see the whole orange, the warmth? Darkness is there. Yeah, darkness and a lot of warmth because it was Christmas. Yeah, the green is popping. You see the rosemary was a little dull. What yeah. up, dull to get? The yellowness has come because it was Christmas time. You wanted to look warm. It was mulled wine. Um, so yeah, so that's what it is. And... Uh, do you want me to show you one more? You want me to show you the chocolate gelato also? You can show off some, not uh, dessert, but you can show off ordinary food if that's possible. I don't have one. Um, ordinary, okay, let me see what I have. Okay, one more thing. This was, um, you can scoop the ice cream also. Yeah. So you have your bowl and everything ready and then you quickly scoop it and you have to just keep click, click, click. Okay, and you have to go really fast. So you've done honey, almond, something. Yeah, well, that's another idea, by the way. Yeah, Asian, black sesame. Okay. So I swirled in honey into the basic white base. Mm -hmm. um, added some vanilla also. And then there was some almonds and black sesame. This was an Asian. This was actually an ad for a honey brand. It's more like a Chinese ice cream. Yes, Chinese. exactly. Yeah. So this is Chinese flavor. So you can do Asian flavors. Um, so yeah, if you have more flavor inspiration... That was a nice one. It was a honey, yeah, it was a honey brand. You were doing organic honey. Mm -hmm. So yeah, any questions on food photography? I'll just see if I can get some fruits and apples and all. Just say, okay, ice cream. Yeah, I'll We can take some questions, uh, Vasha. Sure. I, I think what uh, people can click pictures and then once uh, and post it in the group and you can give some comments on that, uh, Natasha, once people do that, right? So there's a question that uh, can we substitute melted chocolate for cocoa powder? Right, sir. Sorry, I don't have any food cooked right now. Handy. Yeah, tell me. So there's a question that can you use melted chocolate for cocoa powder? Melted chocolate for cocoa powder. No, the melted chocolate will uh, solidify um, when the ice cream freezes. So it'll become very solid. Okay. That's why the cocoa powder. Liquid chocolate always solidifies once it gets cold. We've already all um, answered all the questions. There was this mimosa flavor. Um, mimosa would be a sorbet. So a mimosa is sparkling wine or prosecco plus orange juice or a peach juice. Um, so you would have to make a sugar syrup with sugar, water and orange juice. Mm -hmm. Then you would add champagne or prosecco or sparkling wine into it, right. and um, then you would freeze it like a sorbet. Oh. Good for summers. Yeah, like that's good for summer. You can serve it like a slush, also. Um, you know, in the, like a slush in a glass. Mm -hmm. That can also be done. So I want to talk to you since you were asking about food photography, based on whatever we discussed. Right. Um, let me show you a few things, yeah? So you see, this was this is from my book, from Fast Fresh Flavorful. This is a Kung Pao cauliflower. Oh, yeah. Um, so Kung Pao cauliflower, what I did, again, you first see the color of the food. Right. A dark background would not have stood out. So hence the white plate, white napkin, the rice is there as an accessory. And I've clicked the picture. 
Yeah. You see a little bit of garnish. Um, now it's also important to garnish your food well. This was a tropical look. So this had, I got a blue backdrop and I used the, look at the curry, the colors. You put two. Sometimes I want to tell you that abundance is important. You always have to show that food is abundance mein hai, zyada hai, and not little bit. Hmm. So how food photography has changed? Like I remember Tarla Dalal book had a very nice setting about everything and then the food was placed. And now yeah. the emphasis is only on the food. Yes, exactly. The focus is on the food. Now the focus is on the food. Yeah. Um, how has it changed? It's, um, it's more minimalistic. Yeah, yeah. It's more minimalistic. I would say you point avoid all the elaboration. Yeah, it's to the point nowadays how even the new millennial children are there. They're to the point. They don't like to be around the bush. <laughs> there you go. So even in restaurants and the way to serve is, you know, you don't put too much of dhaniya patta. You put that one dhaniya patta. Um, even your garnishes now, you don't have the whole garden happening on your dish. Huh. Um, so that's that. Then gray crockery, you can also use dark crockery. Uh, so if you use an Asian dish, I'll just give you, um, because I could not cook all this food. You see, it's Asian food. So I've used black. Mm -hmm. Black crockery. Again, it's still neutral, but it's a dark color. So that is very in right now, dark crockery. This was a soup. The soup was white. So I used a black, mm -hmm. a black plate. So contrast the, your crockery with the food. And always show abundance and use natural light. So what are your three simple tips for a perfect picture? Three simple tips for a perfect picture. Let your food shine. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'm right here. Let your food shine. So you use, make the food pop up. Mm -hmm. Frame um, your picture so you don't have too much of unnecessary stuff. And you just have... Uh, what is important. Mm -hmm. You know, I see some photographs of people have put salt, pepper, chili. Um, the whole kitchen is happening in that one picture. So then you're wondering, ki wo chili ka ad hai, ki khana ka ad hai, ki crockery ka ad hai. Yeah. What is the <laughs> It should be conveyed in a proper way. What you're trying to convey, it should be very loud and clear. Exactly. And the lighting. Because if food gets bad light, mm. um, it can look very unappetizing. Right. So you want fresh, you want, and I have seen people using herbs which are not fresh. Now that brown herb will remain, that sarava mint will. You have to be particular. You have so to be particular. What I've seen that once uh, you, you should do your photography around uh, noon time, which is the correct time to do a uh, photography, or jo goduli ka time hota hai, which you say it's like around when the sun is about to set. So that's the yeah. best time the picture comes. Sun is about to set is not, you need the warmth, you need the yellow light of the sun. Um, so, you know, it all depends where your window is. Shadows, so, if that is also a good time to click a picture. Yes. And They're all good times. You just have to adjust your angle mm -hmm. um, based on the light, the time, the weather. Um, and that's where editing comes into the picture also. So, editing is like the makeup. No? Yeah. <laughs> foundation so <laughs> that's where the editing comes in yeah, they should <laughs> models with pictures know that the models are so ordinary and once exactly. they up, how beautiful they look <laughs> absolutely you know the whole skin is gone yeah make up here we so do the same with food so I, sometimes you no know, i see actually what i had made when a photo with yeah what has come out and i'm like okay that yeah. is the, that is technology so now Food photography is equally important for an entrepreneur to promote oneself because you know you can be a great un a chef, but until you've promoted yourself in the right way, it's it doesn't reach people. Yeah, so I'll just give some advice. I know a lot of you might be food entrepreneurs here. Um, marketing is everything, unfortunately, today. Um, you can have a simple dish, but if you market it really well, um, so picture. Take the right pictures, see what is the USP, what do people want? Do they want healthy food? Do they want quick food? Do they want spicy food? Um, so see what the consumer wants and market it accordingly. But um, take nice pictures and pick on what aspect of the dish you want to publicize. Correct.
So yeah, Instagram is important. I now have a YouTube channel and a website, digital marketing. Um, so folks, if you are in the food business or any business, you're not on the digital platform. Unfortunately, the world is moving too fast. And because I have a lot of friends, you know, and they do, they're like, oh, it's so complicated. I don't understand. But then you hire somebody who understands. I have a team. I'm not a technical person. Um, my job is to cook. But, you know, if you want to put yourself out there, you just have to move with the times. Unfortunately, it's moving very, very fast. So catch up. Yeah. So Natasha, I really like the way you've taught in a very simple way, you know, actually you made cooking sound so simple and ice cream. I mean, I have never done so much desserts at home, but okay. now it seems so simple to set up your own gelato counter at home, especially for kids birthday parties because they love ice cream. Yes. And can you just tell us something about how to set up the whole ice cream counter? What else to put, uh, go along with it, which, you know, like some bits and cakes, cake pieces and chocolate shavings, what all should be put? Yeah. Okay, so, so what we can have is you have a gourmet adults counter, a topping counter, right. and then you have the kiddies counter. Yeah. Um, so kiddies counter, so also what we used to have in the ice cream shops, Mama Mia, for the adults, you want to see a good, you need a chocolate sauce, two, three sauces, so salted caramel, mm -hmm. um, a chocolate version, a fruit sauce, or chopped fresh fruits. Mm -hmm. um, even the freezing chocolate I showed you, it stays liquid, and you can just put it on. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then nuts, different types of toasted nuts, not kachas, just toast them in a pan, you can do, you know. Mm. Um, nuts would be good and yeah same some chocolate chips and stuff that's the adult counter mm. nice sauces I would definitely talk about you know different sauces you can do like add alcohol you know strawberry and white wine you get frozen berries in the market these days right so you just cook the berries with some water and some wine or um, and you know just blend it oh. so that's the adult counter um, kids go crazy it's a candy store <laughs> Marshmallows would also taste nice. Sorry, what was that? Marshmallows, flamed marshmallows. I'm not a kid. I hate any of that candy stuff. I look at all the food color and that and I'm like, okay, you know, being in the food industry, you know what's going into all that. Right. Um, and yeah, my kids, they target the color. So yeah, marshmallows, can, um, gems, chocolate chips, different kinds of cookies, sprinkles. You yeah. get colored sprinkles, chocolate sprinkles, but they're all very, very harmful. But yeah. Humble brownie would go very well. Yeah. Brownie chunks, small bite size or crumbled. Mm -hmm. Basically, what's not in the ice cream can go on top of the ice cream. So you need the whole world in your cup. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I would say. Ice cream cones. You, so you keep a counter of cones. Yes. Um, which you can just buy ready. The ice cream. Sorry? Children love to lick the ice cream. Yeah, they love to lick the ice cream when the mums are wiping their clothes and they have the fancy, you know, the best clothes on their parties. So we can make um, you know, the chocolate cone with the uh, sauce you've taught us. Same, same. Dip the chocolate cone into the same sauce yeah. and uh, just the, yeah, the edges, the same thing. You just, so if it gets a little solid, just microwave it. Okay. This okay. is got like, I want a little solid. Yeah. Just microwave it. This can stay in the fridge for up to five, six days. Okay. Um, or even longer, actually. And just microwave it and dip your cones in it. Wow. And what's the shelf life of these ice creams? About eight weeks? No, no, no. So there's no preservatives that I haven't added CMC, GMS, which is done in commercial things. So about two weeks. After that, it starts tasting. It doesn't taste fresh. Ten days, I would say. Ten, Ten days. I also want to give some tip to anyone... So the, my earlier gelato workshops, people have actually started their own ice cream brand. Okay. So if you're having a party, save yourself the hassle of scooping and all that. Just pre-freeze your mix into ice cream cups. That's a very good tip. Yeah. So they're ready. So that time you've got screaming kids, who's going to do all that work? So if you're in a business and you want to start your own gelato brand, uh, ladies, you can just pre, if you get 500 ml tubs, you get small cups. Put the mix directly in your paper tubs and freeze them. Hmm. And they're ready to be sold. You just need a fancy brand, Mamma Mia, Amore Mio, Ciao Bella, you know, and 
hey, you've got gelato ready to sell. It's all in the marketing. Correct. So thank you, Natasha. I mean, you, you've really given us the whole perspective into ice cream making, right? From making it to how to, you know, uh, display it and uh, how to even market it if somebody wants to do it. Thank you so much. Aarti, over to you. So Thanks. I'll just interrupt you. Um, folks, if you want more insight onto quick, fast cooking, hmm. uh, I am online. So you can connect on my YouTube channel. Uh, my Instagram, Natasha Chelmi, and my book is available on Amazon. If you have more questions on my book, I am on the WhatsApp group as well. Yeah? Right. Over to you, Arvi. Super. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha. You surely made our afternoon amazingly delicious. It was so wonderful to watch you make these ice creams and gelatos and talk about your journey, how you found your Ikigai and how each one of us can actually reach out to do whatever we want and age no bar. I think that that point so subtly but beautifully came out from with uh, all the talk you had. Uh, on behalf of, can I request the IT team to share the green certificate, please? On, on behalf of Iki Flow Kanpur chapter, I would like to uh, present you with a green certificate at Flow, we honor our guests by planting a tree in your name. And uh, this tree is planted in the Tamil Nadu uh, state. And it's a tree for the tribal areas. So you can locate and you can watch your tree grow and fondly remember us at Flow Kanpur. Thank you so, so much for this wow. wonderful session. I would also invite you to, if you could announce the contest for our Flow Kanpur members before I invite you, Vice Chair, for yes. a moment. That's the most exciting bit, and I'm looking forward for me because I don't have to work. Um, yeah, so we have a contest just for Flow Kanpur, um, where you, after all that, I want to see how much you paid attention. We want you to get creative with your gelato flavors. Take a nice picture after what you learned today. Send in the entries. What is the deadline, Aarti? A week from today. Okay, so a week from today. Send in your entries and the three lucky winners get a signed copy of my cookbook, Fast, Fresh, Flavorful. Yeah, so nice flavors, interesting flavors, good pictures. And is anybody tasting them, Aarti? Where's yes. the plan? Varshav, have you and me would like to offer in case you want to send it to tasting, in case you want to bribe the judges? Yeah. <laughs> we are free to be, you know, you can bribe the judges. And by 26 February, we'll announce the winners. So before that, send in your pictures and hopefully we get to try some ice cream. <laughs> Lucky you, I'm all the way here. But I am available on the WhatsApp groups for a few days. If you want to do some chit chat, want to send me your regular food pictures and I can edit and guide you on it. Um, because I really want you to learn and that's why I do what I do. Um, so yeah, we can connect next series of whatsapp you, can i can i just request my senior vice chair kanika Vets to please come in and give the vote of thanks hi good evening everyone thank you natasha thank you natasha so much for the, such an amazing workshop today it was absolutely easy going recipes and with the ease which you showed us it's worth appreciating all of us are going to make some super mouth-watering gelatos soon. And this summer, I'm sure we'll have more smiling faces and happy tummies back home. And I'm sure we'll not forget to kick some good pictures of whatever we cook. Thank you, Chairperson Aarti Gupta, for organizing such amazing workshops for us. Thank you, Varsha. You were an amazing host. And knowing the passion for food you have, I feel you're the perfect host today. Thank you so much. I would like to thank our sponsors, Balenciaga Socks, Loya Cop, and RD Knox for their support throughout the entire year. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for coming today and joining us and learning some good recipes. Thank you, Natasha. Bye-bye.